have the dynamic Richard Snowden. They have the elusive Parky Chul, who will be the king of the ground. SFL player, live on Twitch TV. It is a perfect night for football in Metro Stadium in Buffalo, New York. Hello and good evening. Welcome to the SFL Network on Twitch for tonight's semifinal between the DC Dragons and the New York Knights. Alongside Mike Peters, I am your play-by-play -play commentator, Cameron Irvine. Mike, how are you doing tonight? DC and New York split the season series, both home teams winning each game by 11 points. They had to go to a third tiebreaker just to try to figure out who was going to get this home game. It went to the Knights because they beat the Wolfpack in the regular season, the only team to do so. Let's head down to the field for the coin toss. You ready? Let's do this. Gentlemen, please make your call. Heads. Heads it is. We'll kick. The Dragons have won the toss and select a kick. From Buffalo, New York, it's the Dragons and the Knights. New York and Parky Chul will receive. We're underway. From the 10, New York on the return up to the 25 yard line. And Mike, what are you looking for most out of today's game? Well, I think anytime New York's out there, you got to look at Parky Chul and you know, see how they're going to utilize him and see how the defense is going to re react to him. Uh, not many teams have been able to stop him this year, but there have been a couple that have slowed him down, and is DC going to be one of those? It's first and 10 from the 25 with two running backs in the backfield. Tight set here for New York, and to start the ball game, they'll give it off to Parkey Chol, and he's met in the backfield, and Parkey Chol will get no gain, and that's what the Dragons want to see out of Leroy Ambush and the rest of the defense tonight, second down. Well, there we go. I mean, right off the bat, DC's crowding the line. Um, it looks like they're going to make a concerted effort to slow down uh, Parky Chol, and uh, they did it on the first play. So let's see uh, how, if they can, they're able to be as successful as that as the game progresses. Second and 10 of the 25, and Chris Taylor is to the top of the screen, the wide receiver. He Chol in the backfield along with the fullback. He will take a carry. He Chol will to the right side, and He Chol picks up three blocks and a nice open field tackle made by Cedric Trevillian. That's a four-yard pickup, and it will set up an early third down for New York. Well, that one, they actually got a nice hole um, right on the right side. Parky Chol was able to get through there, but a great open field tackle, and they hold them to a four-yard gain. So, so far, defense looking good for D.C. On third down and six, New York will go empty backfield. They're in the home. Gold helmets 
Charcoal colored jerseys and pants, red numbers, and red and gold trim. Back to pass, St. Clair, and St. Clair will swing it outside Chris Taylor, but he ran his route short of the first down markers, and it's a quick three and out for the home team, New York Knights. Well, not the way that New York wanted to start this game, for sure. Uh, they would have liked to have got a first down, kind of got a drive going and get something under them, but, you know, it's early, and, you know, a lot of the early part of playoff games especially is just kind of feeling out each other. So they're going to see how DC adapts, and they'll probably make some changes as we go along. You guys said earlier in the broadcast that Mike needs to speak up a little bit. Let me know if that has been resolved as uh, New York will punt it away. They're just looking for more out of you, Mike, always, aren't they? <laughs> They're so demanding. I don't know if I can ever really uh, <laughs> meet their expectations. So the Dragons return the punt up to the 34. It'll be first down for D.C. there. And a good start for the Dragons tonight. Now will come Zach Zuli, number 18, second highest uh, quarterback rating in the league, 107. As D.C. comes out in black helmets, white jerseys, black pants with the teal numbers, uh, gold, white, and teal trim. And out of the eye, Zach Zuli will drop the throw to start the game, and Zuli will float it down the middle, and that pass is off the hands of B.A. Bostwick, who had two touchdowns in their last meeting. It'll bring up second down. Well, one thing that's I like about D.C.'s offense is they're really balanced. Um, they've got, you know, they can throw the ball with Zuli. They can run it with Snowden. Um, they've got a good receiver and great Corky. So a lot of different ways that they can attack you and keep you off balance. It's going to be interesting to see what New York does to try to contain you. Greg Corky, second in the league in yards per reception, uh, over 20. Uh, Caesar Cannon from Honolulu, the only one that finished with a, with a better stat line than uh, Corky in that category this year as uh, Richard Snowden is pounded after a two-yard gain by Bobby Law, who was second in the league this year in tackles with 84. Bobby Law comes through there and there's a big, big hit on him. Uh, Snowden definitely felt that one and is going to be uh, – looking for him the next time he comes through the middle. Third down and eight at the 36, out of the eye. Revan and Corky are the receivers, and back to pass is Zuli, and he will look Corky's direction. A deep ball is caught over the defense. 25-20, 15 down to the nine-yard line. Greg Corky over the outstretched arms of Daniel gets a DC first and goal. Well, DC is wasting no time in getting Corky involved, and on a, what was it, third and third and six, third and seven, they don't look to just try to pick up the first down and get a drive going. They're going to go to the air, gonna air it out down the sideline. Great throw from Zuli. Corky comes up with the catch, and now they're inside the 10, ready to go out on top early on in this game. Right. Taking a page out of the DR Sim book, if you missed the first semifinal, DR Sim, five touchdowns in the loss. He had all of Baltimore's touchdowns in that 44-34 defeat. First and goal at the nine. Four receivers, trips left. Handoff goes to Snowden out of the backfield. He cuts it back left inside the seven down to the, about the six-yard line. Second and goal. Nice wrap-up tackle there by Daniel. Yeah, that was a great tackle by Daniel. Looked like Snowden had a little bit of room to work there, but he comes flying in. Wraps up the legs. Perfect form tackle. Uh, coaches out there would love to see tackles like that. Um, stops him. Just a three-yard gain. And second down and see what they do. Second down, goal at the six, out of the eye. Three receivers for the Dragons, 4-3. Defensive set for New York. D.C. on their opening possession, trying to put up six. Hand off Snowden, right up the middle, and Richard Snowden untouched into the end zone. And the Dragons, the visiting Dragons on top. There's a flag. It's coming back. No. Late hit. And that will be a touchdown. I thought at first they were going to call a uh, chop block or something, but the Dragons are on the board first. Well, that was a <laughs> little touch and go there for D.C. early on. but um, and, and this is the thing that's great about D.C.'s offense is they're very diverse. Um, they can they can take you through the air and on the ground, and Snowden able to get a couple blocks, get through the middle, and early on, D.C.'s out in front. 8.52 on the clock, an impressive opening drive for D.C. And the last time they were here in New York, they actually got out they're used to getting out to hot starts against New York. They had a 17-14 lead in their first meeting and blew that. And then uh, when they were in D.C. earlier this year, they jumped out quick on New York 14-0. And uh, that's that's what you got to do against a team like the Knights, uh, Mike, uh, because they're built to run the ball and slow you down. Well, they are. and But anytime you have the league's you know, leading MVP candidate, Parky Chol, uh, no lead is really safe. Uh, he's always one broken tackle away from a long run. So it's nice to get out in front, but they're really going to have to keep working on it. 
um, and shut them down to, you know, make that first drive mean a whole lot. From the 10, Knights return up to the 31. It's it's sort of hard to believe. Parky Joel, 1,910 yards. He obliterated Pete Bruski's old record um, for uh, for rushing yards in a game, which at the time seemed ridiculous. It was uh, 1,478 at the time. I mean, that's almost 500 more yards. Imagine what he's going to do in a 12-game season. Yeah. That, <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. That's going to be... A pretty special if he can keep it up. Offside, free play here, and St. Clair hit as he threw, flips it out to Taylor. They'll take the penalty, and it'll be first and five. I really like to see him take a shot down the field there on the, on the penalty, or the, on the free play there. He, they got him offside, and then he just goes a little quick out. He wasn't gaining a whole lot by throwing that take a shot down the field, but they pick up the five and they replay it. They're setting him up. Setting up. Just make him think it's, make him think it's <laughs> short, and then they're going to hit him over the top. That's right. Let's the see. next time they jump offside, they'll say, "Oh, they're just going to throw it short. It won't be any big deal." There you go. There you go. So you're thinking way. You're thinking ten steps. Ten steps ahead. Well, I'm Depressive. thinking. I'm thinking like a head coach. You know? <laughs> That's what you got to do, right? It's always a game of chess. First and five at the 36. Two in the backfield, tight set for New York, and nine in the box for the Dragons. And we've seen teams load up the box, but if uh, they lose containment, Parky Chol can get dangerous, and they don't lose containment there. A nice job of getting them around the ankles for a Brown, and it's second and four. Well, we've seen this before um, from teams when they play Parky Chol. There's been games where he comes out and he starts off kind of slow, and teams are playing sound positionally and making plays. But then he, he, he'll break off a big run or catch a pass out of the backfield and take it to the house, and everything kind of falls apart. So it's going to be interesting to see if D.C. can keep playing like this for the entire game. Two in the backfield for New York, same formation, just flipped it to the other side, handoff on a stretch to Parky Chol, right out of the gate, Parky Chol breaks a tackle, just what Mike was saying, 2015-10, touchdown New York, and we are in for a really, really wild game here tonight apparently, as the Knights get on the board. It, you know, it, I don't, I, you know, it, this guy is just, it, he's something else, you can, you can have him contained, but here he gets a huge hole, Breaks the tackle. It was a great tackle. I don't look like he had him wrapped up from behind. He just those big tree trunks for legs. He shakes it off and just goes blasting on the field. He even puts the ball up and taunts him a little bit. Uh, this is going to be a great playoff game. We can tell. If the first couple minutes of this game are any indication, this is going to be a, a great game and it's going to be a lot of fireworks, I can tell. Parky Chol in the last meeting with New York had just 121 yards. That was a season low. <laughs> 121 yards. Uh, the guy. He just continues to be unstoppable. New York back-to-back -back summer champions trying to make it three for three. And uh, they have tied the ball game up here early on. And so far, offense, offense, offense in the wild card round as Louisville and Santa Fe, a couple of dominant defenses, await in the semifinals. It will be interesting to see what DC, how they respond here. You know, as we talked about, they've got a nice balanced offense, but I don't know if they've got an offense that wants to get in uh, a shootout with another team. You know, they kind of they kind of like to play it balanced on both sides of the ball. Um, but if you know New York's answering back with two and three play drives, and you know their offense keeps has to come back out there, I don't know if that's the kind of game they want to play. From the 12, DC on the return up to just about the 28 yard line, sort of went out on an island when he cut it back to the left side, and all of a sudden there were no white jerseys in the picture, and it'll be first and ten for the Dragons. So, Greg Corky, he got open wide on that on that third down play, which I think part of it, you know, being a third and seven, um, the defense wasn't really expecting to take a shot. But are they going to keep going to that? Are they going to have a matchup out there that they can exploit? Or, you know, is that going to be kind of a, a one-off type of play there? First and 10 of the 28-yard line, and, uh, and Zuli's going to drop back to pass again. Zuli's taking a shot, and that pass is caught. A 22-yard pickup for Artorius Revan, who's not a – Big target in this offense, and uh, Zach Zuli is not shying away from the pressure tonight. Well, Zuli was looking good early on. He sits back in the pocket, uh, goes right over the middle. Perfect throw. Um, really liking what we're look, we're seeing from him early on. He's he's putting the ball where it needs to be uh, in the hands of his open receivers, and if he's able to do that all night, DC is really going to be in good shape. It's a fascinating matchup. Zach Zuli, you know, rookie. All all these guys except for DJ Greenwood at corner uh, are rookies. Uh, on this Dragon team, and they're taking on, you know, a West St. Clair quarterback for New York who's been to three champion, three of the of the four championship games. It's 
it's sort of hard to fathom. It's it's sort of like, uh, you know, uh, oh, I don't, I wouldn't call it a David and Goliath situation, but in, in terms of experience, it is. Yeah, for sure. In terms of experience, and you know, there's something to be said about that. And as this game plays along, are we going to see the experience of St. Clair um, shine through? Um, that's yet to be seen, but so far. Um, Zuli's uh, definitely looking good. Second and five, Snowden takes the handoff. He picks up three. Uh, Snowden out 19 yards, averaging just shy of four yards per carry, but both running backs have a touchdown. <laughs> One of them's averaging 17 yards per carry, so <laughs> a little bit different. A little bit different production so far. Yeah, I always like to joke, uh, you know, when they when they get when they dip down to like 9.9, .9, it's like, oh, they have a horrible game. They've they've blown their average to bits. Trips left, and Zuli's going to hand it off on a third down and two, and Richard Snowden's got a lot of room, and Snowden is out of the 31-yard line, and that's another dragon first down, and D.C. against a New York defense, often underrated, uh, having their way here in the first quarter. Well, Snowden did average 5.3 yards per carry on the season, and he does have a season high of 77. So he is capable of the big play, and he is capable of moving the chains. As we see him there, they have no hesitation giving the ball on third and two and letting him pick up the first down. First and 10 at the New York 31. There's a look at Patrick Daniel, the gold star free safety, who got beat by Greg Corky on the opening possession. Three receivers, two to the left. Zuli out of the gun, back to pass. And Zuli's got all kinds of time again. That pass is caught by Bostwick. Just a one-yard gain, but hey, it's better than a sack or an incomplete, and it's second and nine. They've got to move the ball around, you know, just a little, you know, short little... Uh, hook over, over the middle there for a one-yard gain. You know, you just, you're just that's the play that you use to set up something else. You run that play again later on, and you get the defense bite, and then you run a post behind it or something like that. That's just the play you're using to set up the defense for uh, you know, another play later on in the game. Split receivers and offside, and uh, Snowden's going to take the handoff. Snowden, oh, Richard Snowden spins back inside, breaks a tackle, and scores. That's going to be a touchdown, DC. How in the world? Did he keep his balance and move the other way? Wow. That's, uh, <laughs> well, we were just talking about it, too. Uh, you know, Snowden's got that uh, that ability to break away, and had that had he had more field there, he was definitely able to keep going. You know, he, he goes through the hole, got, doesn't have a whole lot of room there. One guy misses a tackle, he spins out of another, and, wow, shakes off that one right down there at the end and, and is able to get in there. So, D.C., as shown early on, they set the pace with the first touchdown, and then they come and they answer back with a great drive there. Snowden lead the way on that one. So uh, very interesting matchup here. D.C. showing a lot of variety. Uh, now we get to see what New York's going to do. Are they going to keep going to he choke and he, you know, keep doing it the whole game, or are they going to have to be a little bit more diverse and work in some other guys? NY Kia 31 in the chat says uh, <laughs> this game is going to be a circus. Don't you love when the marketing Department comes up with Snowden versus Heechol, and they both combine for three touchdowns in seven minutes. That's just great. <laughs> I think the guys in the marketing department need to get a raise. <laughs> We've everyone, you and Greg, man, y'all, you come in here and you do, everybody always says everybody gets a raise, and I'm just like, where is everybody hearing this stuff? I, I don't <laughs> understand. I don't understand. Well, if we can get other people raises, and that maybe it, that in turn reflects on us, <laughs> we get raises too. So yeah, we're just trying to uh, earn some extra through osmosis. I think. There you go. Uh, so New York returns from the 10-yard line up to the 25, past the 25, past the 30, up to the 32, and that's where uh, the Knights are going to set up. And, uh, you know, you can't fault, going back to the last play, because I, I did have another point to make, uh, you can't fault the, uh, I'm not sure who that was, it looked like Silva, you can't fault his pursuit angle. He thought Snowden would continue to, to bounce it out left side, and, just cut it back and made him look silly. Well, and it's it was, <laughs> go ahead. That was well, it was a bad tackle attempt too. I mean, he had a good angle on him, but it was a bad attempt to wrap it up. St. Clair is going to throw it deep. That pass is caught. First down to the 48-yard line. That's Jake Legacy, the myth, the man, the legend here in Buffalo, and it's another first down for New York. Well, I definitely like them seeing uh, Legacy get him involved early. We don't want to. Ideally, I, I don't think you want to just rely just on Heechul. You want to have some extra options out there and come out immediately after that touchdown by Snowden. New York answers back and they go to Legacy. They're like, hey, we can do some other things other than just go to Park Heechul. And so this is, this is going to be a great chess match. I can feel it already. Uh, a lot of variety already. A lot of you know different plays out there. And 
you know, we're going to see a lot of interesting things, I think, as this game goes along. You know, the last couple of times you've been here, Mike, it's been all defense. I don't think these teams got the memo as he Chole takes the handoff, spins past one, and a nice tackle again by Trevilian, a four-yard gain. That's the second great open field tackle for the strong safety for the Dragons, and he's off to a fine start. Yeah, I haven't, um, outside of the first time that I came and just kind of checked you guys out, and I actually wasn't on the broadcast, I haven't seen a... Uh, a big shootout. I haven't called a big shootout. It's been mostly defense. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, maybe 100 points collectively in this game. That would be fun. Oh, man, that's going to be a tough box score to fill out. Second down at 6 the 47. Parky Joel bounced in the backfield and wrapped up. Uh, Dominic Porter got the first hit on him. Then uh, Norton came in and cleaned up, and it's going to be third and nine. Well, here we go. We, we see defense, or D.C.'s defense, you know, setting up, playing good containment, keeping Parky Joel in front of him. Um, but again, you know, all it takes is that one missed tackle, and then he's gone. So um, they're doing really well uh, adapting to it. We'll have to see how that plays out as well. West St. Clair swings it outside. Taylor looking for the corner, but he had to turn around to make the catch. And we have seen that multiple times already in the quarter. New York throwing it a little bit more, but the execution not just there, and it's fourth down. Yeah, it, we did. We saw that the exact same route earlier too, and it come up short. Um, like to see him be a little bit more aggressive on that, but um, again, you know, I think they're trying to feel out, see what they can get away with. I think they're learning that they're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive in the passing game, and I'm sure we'll see him adapt as the game goes along. So New York's going to have to kick it away. DC has scored on their first two possessions. This punt is going to bounce the nine-yard line down to the four, and boy, if I if I had a nickel for every time I saw a guy just run into the end zone thinking that he scored a touchdown on a punt return, I'd be a very uh, a very well, still poor, but uh, richer than I am. <laughs> be able to give out some of those raises. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's not even the second quarter, and it's been brought up twice here already. There's going to be rioting in the streets. You, you, <laughs> we will increase the revenue. <laughs> are you a South Park guy? Do any, do any South Park no, really. watching? No. Uh, we should have talked about that before was, the game. Before we <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do a Cartman, you're breaking my balls, whole bit, but I can't do it now. Richard... Uh, Richard Snowden picks up nine on the carry. He's off to a very fast start, and it's second and one for the Dragons as the first quarter winds down. I think Parky, I mean, Parky Chill's got the, the notoriety, and, and he's got the big play already, but I think consistently, uh, consistency at least, um, Snowden's looking like the bigger, the better back so far, um, at least being able to turn out consistent yards and get, and get first downs, which is the important part. Three receivers, two to the right for the Dragons. Ball on the right hash mark, and Snowden's going to get another carry. Snowden is going to be wrapped in the backfield. That's a three-yard loss. First time he's been dropped behind the line of scrimmage. 67 yards on nine carries. And, Mike, you haven't been here in a couple of weeks. For those of you, or, or for those out there who have not uh, who have not heard you speak, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, I am uh, the owner and operator of px1sports.com. We run Madden. Uh, sim leagues over there. We actually play out the game, so we're a little bit different than what the SFL does, but we've got three leagues over there, um, and we're excited to do some things that are very similar to SFL. Uh, we do a Red Zone channel. A, uh, we're going to do some live play-by-play -play with you, which we've um, talked about already a little bit. So um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, happy to partner up with SFL and, uh, you know, do a little bit cross-brand promotion, get some of your guys interested in what we're doing, some of our guys interested in you, and uh, kind of see where the whole thing goes. First and 10 of the 31, Snowden with that last catch. Three receivers to the left. We've seen this a couple of times out of the Dragons already today. Snowden's going to take the carry. And Snowden around the left side. It got another first down of the 41. I believe that's a, a similar play or an exact play to the uh, uh, touchdown score on the last drive, and he picks up another 11. Well, he's getting good blocking there, but he's also shown a lot of drive. As you see him he, trying to wrap him up with an arm tackle, You'll get him down eventually, but he's going to fall forward for a couple yards to pick up the first down. And, you know, again, that's the one thing that he's been able to do consistently so far early on in this game that Park Hichel has not been able to do. Landry Hat gets the whole Cartman thing. You know, people know what I'm trying to do out there. You just, you, yeah, I don't know. We were on an island. First and 10 to the 41 as Azuli drops back to throw. Pressure in his face, flips it outside. Snowden tried to turn the corner, stepped out. Only a one-yard game. Second half. Who's the guy with the, the little hood over his head? Kenny, That's Kenny. Kenny, who killed Kenny, right? Yeah, yeah, he always dies, and then they say, you know, yeah, you killed Kenny. Right. <laughs> I, I could go on and on and on about South Park, but I have a feeling you wouldn't be able to contribute, so I have to stop. That's about all I got on South Park. I don't know who killed Kenny, but I've seen him before. New episodes this Wednesday at 9. 
You're welcome. Comedy Central. Second and nine to the 42. Hand off to Snowden. And Snowden lost a yard. I really got to stop, uh, stop handing out all of these... Uh, these, these free pubs for these people because uh, then we're not going to get any raises. Well, it's, kind of, it's kind of like test driving a car. You keep putting them out there and, and you do right. it and you get them, you know, they're like, hey, this is cool. They're talking about us and, you know, maybe they get some extra people in and then, then they actually buy buy from you. So maybe that's what you're doing a little bit. Maybe that, e maybe. Expect to see Subway, <laughs> H-E-B, and Comedy Central coming soon to um, uh, as our app. <laughs> sponsored advertising. Zuli's pass is caught to Greg Corky right over the top of the defense again. And Zach Zuli has looked better in this quarter than I've seen him all season long. Daniel makes the tackle, but the Dragons are in scoring position again. Well, you know, he told me before the game that he thought you didn't think he was going to perform very well because he was a rookie and he was uh, coming out to prove you wrong. So he, he's got a little bit of motivation. He, he heard that you you weren't real you worried about his experience in this game. Final play of the first quarter is a loss for Richard Snowden. So DC two for two on opening possessions in that first quarter. They lead the Knights on the road 14 to seven. We'll be back to Metro Stadium after these messages from the Simulation Football League. games for 25 years have failed to bring you a total game day experience. The SFL believes it's been too long a wait. In 2016, a total game day experience arrives. If you love sim football, you'll never want to miss another SFL night again. Multiple games at the same time, more games per season, no more bye weeks. In-game highlights from around the league will keep you engaged. Our league-produced halftime show will catch you up on what you've missed. Customization of your complete roster gives each team a unique brand. An extra star or two won't hurt either. A new league website brings fans the incredible detail of the SFL to the forefront. Play-by-play -play three nights a week in prime time, you got it. SFL is partnering with PX1 Sports, bringing Irvine to Epic Madden matchups starting in September. Mark your calendars. Sunday, September 27th, 5 p.m. Eastern. The SFL Championship will feature a four-man commentating crew. It's time to hike next level sim. Our doors are now open. Be the player. Be the coach. Be the owner. Be the league. Be the drama. Grab a seat. Start of the second quarter from Metro Stadium in Buffalo, New York. The Knights historically a very good home team. Dragons 14-7 up on New York on the road trying to knock off the two-time summer champions. New York's a finicky team. They win the championship in both summer seasons before ours or before this one and uh, didn't even make the playoffs in uh, the uh, two winter seasons. And uh, they what's that they're a warm weather team they, they are a warm weather team yes second down and 13 at the 34 to start the second quarter and Zuli hands it off to Snowden and Snowden will pick up a couple that'll bring up a third down and eight for the Dragons in scoring position well this is one of those things that we see on the so far in the first quarter is a lot of third and eights, third and sevens, a lot of long third things. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what they try to do here to try to convert. Um, here we go. Here we go. 
you know, sort of learning to see what Zuli can do. Third down and eight, Zuli back to pass. Zuli is sacked out of field goal range. Big sack there for New York. It may be their first stop of the game. Doug Garner with the hit, it's fourth down. Garner just comes, he's gonna beat his guy, just blows right by the tackle there and gets right in. Zuli doesn't have a lot of time for anything, gets taken down. DC's gonna have to punt and New York has a chance now to drive back down the field while Park controls hands and can try to tie the game. Huge stop there for the New York Knight defense, which had struggled here to start the ball game, and D.C. will try to pin New York inside the 10. This is going to hop at about the 8.5, and, and that is how you don't run into the end zone, and the Knights will start from the 4. That's one thing we don't see a lot um, for guys in this league is a lot of sound coverage um, you know, on, on punts or even returning. But right there, I, you know, really you got to give a lot of credit to the punter there. He dropped it in perfectly and just kind of fell into his hands. But good job by D.C. getting down there and, and down in New York inside the five. So West St. Clair comes out. A uh, uh, Boise State kid actually grew up in Idaho. And what do you think? I think Buffalo is probably pretty similar to potato country up there. It's probably similar. I think it would be a little bit colder. But uh, Buffalo would probably be colder. It's a little bit colder now. But yeah, probably a lot similar. Uh, one yard run for Park Hichol there. His average, see, I get to say it, is down to a dismal 10.1. <laughs> and uh, it's second and nine. What, what's the over under on the yards per carry it, where it gets to be a disappointment? Is it like 12, 15? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a pretty high number. Uh, second and nine from the five. Tight set here. Hichol going to get another carry left side. Park Hichol breaks off a tackle. There he goes. Park Hichol, the speedster. Breaks another and is tackled out of the 30. A gain of 25 for a night first down. Well, and this is kind of what we see um, out of New York for most of the season. And Park Hichol, he's, he's kind of a boom or bust kind of guy. He's not going to be one of those guys that's going to drive and get, you know, consistently turn out four, five, six yards, move the chains. Sometimes he can get bottled up. He's not going to go anyway, go anywhere. But when he gets an opening, he can, he's really explosive and he can make big things happen. Alongside Mike, Pe Mike Peters, I'm Cameron Irvine, and this is the Sim Football Network on Twitch. The number five seed DC Dragons at the number four seed New York Knights. Wild card weekend uh, entertaining you before the Monday Night Football doubleheader. Mike Peters, a big Minnesota Vikings fan, so needless to say, the last few years have been a struggle since Favre decided to retire when he was 65, and uh, it's a whole new season at San Francisco tonight. That's right. How's Jordy Nelson doing? Ah, I knew you were going to say. <laughs> How's Jordy Nelson doing? Second and 11 at the 29-yard line. We're 1-0 and as St. Clair swings it outside. Parkey Chole in the open field. Nice hit by D.J. Greenwood. That is a veteran making an open field tackle on a veteran because we know Parkey Chole can be just as dangerous through the air as he can on the ground. Well, I was going to say, that's, I don't know if I like the <laughs> just the big hit on him there because he's perfectly capable of spinning away from that and going for a big yard. But it was effective. He got him on the ground and stopped him for just a one-yard game. And that's something a little surprising. The whole quarter gone, and we did not see Parkey Chol catch a pass out of the backfield. And that then New York's MO is usually is, is this is going to be a three and out here for the night. Well, check that. They got the one first down, uh, but they're going to have to punt here uh, after that two-yard game for Parkey Chol. But, uh, you know, usually New York's MO is every single play of that ball is going to Heat Chol, but St. Clair did a pretty decent job of spreading the ball around the first. Well, 80%. I remember the, the game we did earlier in the year, it was like 81 or 82% of the – um, offense went through park control but I think that's one of the things that New York has tried to do this year is as the games as the seasons progress they try to be more diverse and, and look to other options and um, so far they've been able to do that as well but in this game um, they haven't found a whole lot of success outside of it. Well on teams like uh, San Francisco and, and DC with penalty down that's not going to help the Dragons field position. That's going to move the football Way back to the 17-yard line. Graham is the culprit, and that is a tough break there for the Dragons. Yeah, you definitely don't want to see um, some penalties like that. And, uh, you know, moving you back to the 16-yard line, that's uh, not ideally where you want to be, but, um, you know, you got to kind of adapt with it. Got a little bit more room to work here, and uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, which direction they go this drive. 
because they've had a lot of success early on. That's looking at the positives. Uh, a lot of more, a lot more room to work uh, as they start for the 16. Swing out to Snowden. Snowden sort of made a wonky adjustment to the football, and he is dropped for a two-yard loss. And we haven't really seen either running back out of the backfield do anything in the passing game so far. The flats have been pretty well defended. Uh, they have. Both defenses are, are doing good at yeah, shutting that down out there and, and flying to the ball, um, which, you know, is interesting. But at the same time, these both these running backs are kind of dangerous when they go up the middle. If that's what you're forcing them to do, uh, you're kind of picking your poison with that, uh, with that mentality. Second and 12 at the 15. Two receivers, two backs, hand off Snowden. Snowden right side. Nice block right at the end of that. First down. Yeah, past the 30, past the 35, down to the 37. A 22-yard pickup. He's got 100 yards in the first half. And uh, we'll get a look at this again. That was fantastic. Well, Snowden up to a little over seven yards per carry now. Um, a great run. I mean, he had great blocking. Just kept following his blocks. Got outside. Shook off the first tackle. But there's three guys there to take him down. And uh, another first down at DC has been very impressive so far with the way they've been able to move the ball, and Snowden's been a huge part of that so far. And they've been on New York side of the field all three of their first possessions, trying to make it four for four here as Zuli's out of the gun, changing the play, and Zuli will flip it outside. Greg, nice backwards one-handed catch. That's a five-yard gain, and uh, Corky, is, he is just making every catch out there today. Well, he is, I, and they keep going to these little flat plays and these little quick outs. I like to see them go over a little bit over the middle or, or take another shot deep and, and see if Corky can beat the defense again. But um, they do pick up five yards, and you know they're able to move the ball without it just being Snowden. So that's definitely a positive for them. Corky was, uh, he was in the Army before joining the Dragons as a wide receiver. Not, uh, not often you see that. As uh, Zuli drops the pass, and Zuli's got time, and Zuli's pass is caught again on the sideline. That's Revan to the night 42. Is there anything Zuli can not do tonight? <laughs> I don't think so. He's been uh, looking to the outs on the left side, a little short quick outs for five yards, and this time he goes with a deep out on the, on the opposite side and picks up about 15 yards and moves the chains. And right now New York's defense is having a really tough time figuring out what DC is doing, and they're not able to find an answer for it. Now, I know you're a big game plan guy, Mike. You, you've got to be loving this game plan right now that the Dragons are coming here with as Snowden is going to lose another guard. Oh, yeah, we've talked about that numerous times. The more unpredictable you can be and the more different, um, different variations and varieties that you can show, both offense and the defense, is, it's going to work out in your favor. And right now, DC is doing a really good job of that. And New York's kind of struggling and figuring out what's going to happen next, and they kind of got them playing on their heels. Nearly halfway through the second quarter, still 14-7 D.C. The defenses have tightened up just a bit. Hand off to Snowden again up the middle, and Snowden tried to cut it back right. Thought he had a hole there on the left and got too cute and only got a yard. Yeah, I thought he was better off just continuing up the way, the way he was. It, not sure what he saw there. I think the hole was too far away for him to try to get to, but he tried to get back over there, and, and it just didn't really work out for him. Third down and 10. Once again, the Knights trying to bend and not break here at the end of this drive. Corky's to the top of the screen, guarded by Silva. Back to pass. Zuli against a blitz. Zuli deep and just overthrew Corky. And it's as simple as that, although he was double covered, so not a horrible play there by Zuli. Well, this is what the New York defense wants to do. They want to, they want to force him into third and eight, third and nine. You know, we've seen that they haven't had a lot of success when they've been in those situations. And if they can do that, they're going to set themselves up in, in, in uh, a, a favorable position. Early on in the first quarter and early on in this quarter, they weren't able to do that, but now they are, and uh, time may be changing. We've got to see what the New York offense can do now. So 5.49 to go in the first half. D.C. will try to pin New York deep again, nearly blocked there. A low snap, but a great punt, and it's going to bounce at the five and bounce backwards to the six-yard line, and the Dragons have now pinned the Knights inside the ten. Back-to-back -back punts. I think the punter needs a raise. <laughs> he's, he's doing a good job with, with pinning down the... The coverage team just really doesn't have to do a whole lot, but just run down there and let it bounce up and hit him and then catch it. Most coveted free agent of the offseason, the Dragon punter. <laughs> First and ten at the six. I'm pretty sure punters are only on one-year deals. Uh, as uh, St. Clair hands it off to Heechol around the left side. Heechol makes one-man miss. There he goes again. 
Off to the races, see Joel. Pass the 30 down to the 33. Porter saves the touchdown. And we see that so often at a park, he Joel. If he can just make that first guy miss, you are in big trouble. Yeah, he's, you know, I, what can you do about it? Uh, you you got to take better pursuit angles than that for sure. Um, he left uh, he left a lot of room for him to cut back inside. But, yeah, you make him miss, and he's got that great acceleration. And he can accelerate down the sideline. And what could have turned out to be, you know, short gain turns into, you know, 30 yards. Sorry about that, folks. We want to make sure that we always, uh, uh, that we can make sure that you see every single play out there as we caught a, a, dip, a downturn in bit rate as a Parky Chol picked up five, and it'll be second and five at the ninth 39. Dragons lead 14 7. Well, there they go back to Parky Chol, and he just takes it off the right side and picks up a nice five yards. That's one of the things I said he had trouble doing. He has trouble doing it consistently. He's consistently picking up five or six yards, but he can hit the big home run, and, you know, they can put themselves in, you know, a third and two situation. They'll be in good shape here. Second down, five yards to go at the 39. Two backs in the backfield, handoff Heech Ole, and Park Heech Ole gets the edge, past midfield, and again, Cedric Trevelyan in the open field. He has saved the Dragons on a number of plays, having a great game. I thought Park Heech Ole was going to stiff arm into the ground here for a second. I'll have to take a look. <laughs> it looked like he was going to throw him down, beast mode style, and keep going. But he held on to him and drug him down. Well, I guess he didn't actually get his hand up there and try to do the stiff arm. Just You saw um, Trevelyan's arm come around. I thought he got stiff arm. But it was a good open field tackle alert and save him from being a bigger game than it was already. First and 10 of the 45. We have seen some some mad stiff arms out there. Marky Chol prefers just to outrun you. First and 10 at the 45 into Dragon territory. Knights on the move. And off he Chol. He Chol trying to get around the left side for a third straight time. And Galleon shuts it down, second and 11. I think he's going to be stuck around that 10-yard average now. He's, you're going to get to keep telling him, telling everybody how disappointing he's been today. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it only it only works once, and then if it really gets bad again, it works twice. But uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if he's going to. Well, he could always break off one and go back up to around 20. That's so true. Second and 11 of the 47. They'll run him around the right side, and he's wrapped up by Dominic Porter. That's four straight runs for New York, and. This is what got them in trouble in their 24-13 loss to the Dragons in their last meeting. Uh, just a little bit uh, too one-dimensional here, and it's third down and long. Well, they've got that good receiver in Jake Legacy, and they just they don't utilize him nearly enough. I I understand that Parky Chell's your your bell cow, and you want to put the ball in his hand, but you've got to be a little bit more diverse 
and make the defense think about somebody other than just him. Third down and 14 at the 49-yard line. Two in the backfield, another tight set here. And uh, St. Clair's going to drop back the pass. He was trying to set up St. Clair, but D.C. blew that up, and it's a loss of six, and it's fourth and long. What's well, one of the downsides of putting yourselves in a long third and ten? The deeper you have to go, the longer you have to let for your routes to develop downfield. And then the longer that takes, the more chance that the defense has to kind of try to get in there and get a sack. They're able to do it there. Uh, get sacked and put the fourth down, or force the fourth down, and uh, DC is going to go back on offense. They struggled the last couple drives. Let's see if they're able to turn it around and add to their lead. So it was 14 to seven at the end of the first quarter. Richard Snowden, Parkey, Cho combined for three touchdowns, and with 2:36 left to go in the first half, it's still 14-7. And and very quietly, uh, the defenses have have sort of settled down in this one, and. And uh, now know that you're here, Mike. <laughs> well, <laughs> you mentioned it before, and as I don't have the power yet that you and Greg do, but when you and Greg say something, the, the players listen, and apparently they've adapted and decided to play some defensive football. Three receivers, two to the right side. And Zuli's out of the shotgun, and he will drop the throw. Zuli flips it out to Snowden, and Snowden's got a lot of room, picks up eight yards, and I'm starting to think to myself, well, Zuli did have that one incomplete pass to Greg Corky, but otherwise, does he have an incompletion in this first half? I can't think of another one. But you know what I was just thinking of? Snowden reminds me a lot of LaShawn McCoy. We're the same number, too. He does, well, that might be another reason why, why he <laughs> reminds me of him. But, he, you know, he's a great receiver out of the backfield. He's supposed to as a runner. I uh, really like what I'm seeing. Today. And Snowden tried to stretch it out there, could not pick up the first down. So it's going to bring up third down and two. It takes us to the two-minute warning. Right now, he chole with 140 yards, Snowden with 99 in a battle of running backs. 14-7 DC on top. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification along the New York Night Radio Network. Grab a seat. This is 105.9 WFRD Hillbilly Radio, the round table, Buffalo. Third down, two yards to go. Metro Stadium crowd on their feet. Trying to save the date with a semifinal matchup against the number one Louisville Wolfpack. They trail by seven currently. Zuli is going to draw New York offside. Free play. Going to take a deep shot. And that pass is knocked away. Uh, but it's going to be a first down anyway. Costly penalty there for New York. Jumping offside at home. Well, yeah. Zuli, he's... Did a good job of getting him off size there, but he's doing the one thing that St. Clair hasn't been able to do is he's showing, he's kind of outdoing the veteran in that regard as he's able to take a shot down the field. And he's shown a lot of moxie on his plays that St. Clair's playing a lot more conservative early on. And that's one of the things I think that is making D.C. effective right now is he is able to stretch it out and he is able to do different things. And, um, you know, taking that shot down the field, even though it didn't work out for him, it at least plants that seed in their head. And defense, or, uh, New York's got to prepare for that in defense. First and 10 at the 34-yard line for the Dragons. And four wide receivers, three to the right side with Snowden in the backfield. And Zuli will hand it off to Snowden. And Snowden passed the 35. Uh, got to the 40, pushed back momentarily, but gets back there. It's a seven-yard pickup. He's over 100 yards, second down. That's that formation that we saw him run to the left. Um, early on in the quarter, maybe it was at the end of the first quarter, that diamond formation, they put them out there, they seal it off. It looked like he had broom out on the right side, he didn't see it, they cut out there. It could have been a bigger game, but still a solid seven yard game. Second and three, Zuli now out of the gun, three receivers, DC protecting a seven point lead on the road. We have had teams uh, get upsets on the road uh, before in the playoffs, as Snowden has a lot of room out to the left side, they're gonna go no huddle here to the 49. That was a nice grab by Snowden. He just he reached down, grabbed it off the ground, almost hit the ground, but he picked it up and got the first down, and here they go again. Out of the gun, Zuli back to pass, and Zuli fires over the middle, and Richard Snowden is going around. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he got a little bit too, uh, too confident. In his... He got a little bit too LaShawn McCoy there on that. <laughs> <laughs> he was bobbing when he should have been leaving. Second and 12, Snowden gets another catch, and he lost a, or he gained one yard, tackled out of bounds, which is the only good thing about the play. And all of a sudden, Zach Zuli is only looking in Richard Snowden's direction. It's third down. Yeah, they're kind of turning into the New York Knights in the first half of the <laughs> yeah. season. Yeah. Yeah, third down and, and 11. D.C. protecting a seven-point lead maybe a little bit too closely. Ball at their own 48. This would be the only drive they would have failed to get into New York territory if they don't get any yards here. 
Back to pass, Zuli, deep drop back, Zuli fires it deep down the field, that pass is intercepted at the 27-yard line, Patrick Daniel says, Greg, you got the first one, I got you this time, double cover down the field, and it's first down, New York. Patrick Daniel comes up with a great play there for the New York defense. That was a post route down the middle. I like that he was taking a shot down the middle. He's had he's had it covered most of the time, but he's trying to put the ball in his receiver's hand, make him make a play. But Daniel comes up, steps in front of him, makes the grab, takes it out of traffic, and New York's got an opportunity here to try to tie the score before that. Both teams have all three timeouts. 14-7, D.C. on top of New York. Handoff goes to Parky Chole, and there was nobody out there to block for Park. And uh, I'm a little surprised that New York ran the football just then. Yeah, it's kind of a questionable decision. Not only did they run the football, but they ran it to the side that there was a bunch of defenders unblocked. That wasn't wasn't a great play there with 30 seconds left, but uh, maybe they're happy being down by seven. I know West St. Clair knows what an audible is. That I mean, he should have he should have gotten out of that one. Uh, one receiver, that's Taylor, bottom of the screen. They're going to hand it off again to Heechul. Heechul around the right side, spins away, got eight. They're running some no huddle, and it looks like maybe uh, they just didn't want to take a chance here before the half. Yeah, I don't think they want to turn the ball over there. Like if, if Parky Chul can break something off cool, if not, then we're fine. We'll be done. Third down and five. They took uh, timeout just to see if they can score here on the last play of the half. What do you think it's going to be? Just a little dump out to Heechul? That's what I would guess. Maybe even a run just to see what you can get. You might as well if it's the last play of the half. I think they probably feel like the pick six odds are a bit low. Both these quarterbacks don't throw a lot of interceptions at all. Um, yeah, in both, fact, both top four and pass efficiency. Right, right. And and, and uh, the two of them are two of the three quarterbacks that have thrown uh, single digit interceptions this year. Skeletor P. Funk, the other. Uh, tight set here with Heat Show in the backfield. Final play of the first half. And uh, St. Clair is going to throw the ball, and you're right on the money. He swings it out to Parky Chole. He's got some room. Past the 40, Parky Chole to the 44-yard line. Gain of 12. Not a bad play there. Gets your best player in some space, but uh, they can't get anything out of it. And at halftime, a scoreless second quarter after a lot of fireworks in the first quarter. It's D.C. 14 and New York 7. And Mike and I will continue here on the 2K Sports halftime report. Mike, your uh, first impressions of that first half. It was interesting. It was, uh, came out, like you said, with a lot of fireworks in the first quarter. I thought this was going to be a, a big scoring game going back and forth. Um, but credit to both defensive coordinators. They were able to adapt um, after that first quarter, and they both kind of figured out um, what they were doing, and they've adapted so that it's not working now, and now it's up to the offense as the counterpunch, and we'll see what adjustments they make at halftime and come back out in the third quarter. Over 100 yards on both the uh, ground and through the air for the Dragons. They also had over three minutes of time of possession. That one turnover did hurt, though. Uh, if DC, DC would have much rather been up by two scores than by one as we take a look at the first half highlights. Yeah, it's, uh, well, here's, I was just going to say this. This is one thing I'd like to see them do a little bit more. It, they had success with this play, and they threw it deep to Corky, um, but they didn't really try it again. They tried to throw a couple of posts that one got picked off, one was overthrown, um, but they haven't really tried to get that one-on-one -on -one isolation outside and let Corky blow by the defense. Here we see He Chol um, running it in. Really? I mean, he had a couple of big runs, but that was really the only thing. And he had over 140 yards in the first half, but it was kind of a quiet 140 yards. You know, he had the one big run, but other than that, that's all they've really that's all they've really had. Snowden, on the other hand, as we see running it in for one of his two touchdowns, he's been the far more impressive player in my eyes. Yeah, Snowden uh, with with a couple of scores got uh, DC the lead. Uh, they found Jake Legacy a couple of times in that first half, but uh, but not as much as as uh, New York Knight fans may have may have hoped he would get involved. Chris Taylor doesn't have a catch tonight. Zach Zuli, uh, the bronze sensation, this guy 145 yards uh, did did throw that that one costly interception, but uh, especially in the first quarter looked really really sharp out there. You no, know he reminds me of a sixth round pick out of Michigan. That would be Tom Brady. I was going to say Peyton Manning because he's wearing the same number, but that didn't make any sense. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, the Zuli's not somebody that a lot of guys would have thought were going to was going to have a great season. But right now, he's shown a lot of poise for being a rookie and, and playing in the playoffs right now against a tough team on the road. Um, you have to be really impressed with what he's doing so far. In a tough environment too, this this New York Knight crowd is. Uh, can get really rocking, and uh, obviously, you know these these fans 
they know it's the summertime. They know that this team uh, in the summer plays their best football. And uh, right now, I have to think that D.C. Um, has sort of taken them out a, a little bit out of the game as well. They they got real loud there towards the end of that half, but for the most part, pretty quiet tonight. Well, yeah, New York's a tough place to play in, in any sport, in any environment. There's, you know, there's a lot of passion. Uh, it, you know, they have harsh winners. It hardens a lot of guys. They're usually bitter and, and upset coming out of that. So it's, it's always a tough place to play, but... Um, Zuli and, and, and DC, you gotta give them a lot of credit. They're responding to it and, and doing really well so far. So we will be right back. This uh, will uh, start the third quarter here momentarily. It's DC 14, New York 7. This is the Sim Football Network on Twitch.tv. Stay with us. We'll be back in 60 seconds. have the dynamic Richard Snowden. They have the elusive Parky Chul, who will be the king of the ground. Video games for 25 years have failed to bring you a total game day experience. The SFL believes it's been too long a wait. In 2016, a total game day experience arrives. If you love sim football, you'll never want to miss another SFL night again. Multiple games at the same time, more games per season, no more bye weeks. In-game highlights from around the league will keep you engaged. Our league-produced halftime show will catch you up on what you've missed. Customization of your complete roster gives each team a unique brand. An extra star or two won't hurt either. A new league website brings fans the incredible detail of the SFL to the forefront. Play-by-play -play three nights a week in primetime, you got it. SFL is partnering with PX1 Sports, bringing Irvine to epic Madden matchups starting in September. Mark your calendars. Sunday, September 27th, 5 p.m. Eastern. The SFL Championship will feature a four-man commentating crew. It's time to hype next level sim. Our doors are now open. Be the player. Be the coach. Be the owner. Be the league. Be the drama. Grab a seat. Start of the third quarter from Metro Stadium in Buffalo, New York. And the D.C. Dragons are going to get the football to kick things off. This is the second wild card game of the week alongside Mike Peters. I am your play-by-play -play commentator, Cameron Irvine. Mike Peters providing your in-depth ana analysis for the evening. And uh, here we go. Uh, are we going to get a quarter like the first or a quarter like the second? That, well, that's the that's the question. Um, I think we're probably going to be more inclined to see more of what we saw in the second quarter uh, as the defense has adapted. It's, it's harder to keep making adjustments on offense to keep changing what you're doing and, and fooling the offense. So I would think at this point you want to see most of what you do with the guys mostly, but um, there's a play off. That's why we play the game the field and see what happens. So Snowden takes the handoff. That's going to go for three, brings up second down. And seven, Snowden was the league's third leading rusher behind David Overstreet and Parkeechul this season. 
but still broke Pete Bruschi's record. It was the year of the running back this three, year. Three guys broke it. Second and seven at the 29. Uh, three receivers hand off Snowden again, and Snowden will pick up two. That'll set up a third down and five, and we'll see if uh, Zach Zuli has shaken off the interception rust. So what happens next year when you go to 12? Are there going to be – you guys have SFL purists that are going to be screaming for asterisks? And <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure, but uh, they won't be screaming about uh, losing their four bye weeks, though. I think everyone's <laughs> ready for that to go away. Handoff goes to Snowden. They ran it a third straight time. He lost a yard, and DJ McCoo haven't talked about him a lot tonight, but he uh, gets the tackle in the backfield, and a quick three and out for the Dragons. They caught me off guard, and they're going to have to punt it away. Well, you know, as I said, I think it's harder for the offense to keep adjusting. Once the defense seemed to have figured out what you're doing, it's it's really tough. It, look at the NFL and the Wildcat, and Wildcat broke onto the scene and everybody's having a hard time. Once New, New England figured it out and everybody was able to talk about what they were doing, it was hard for them to keep you know, figuring out something different and change. I think that's what we're seeing in this game. Uh, the offense had all their tricks over the run, and all the defense had adapted. And so it's going to be really tough moving the ball, I think, for both teams um, over these next couple of quarters. So New York returns it up to the 37-yard line. Again, these two teams uh, met twice in the regular season. The uh, first time was here in New York, 38-27. And uh, the second meeting was 24-13 in D.C. That one went to the Dragons. 10-19 to go in the third quarter. First down for the Knights. West St. Clair flips it out. He Chole in the open field. He Chole got away. And then Tre Trevelyan is there again. A guy just pops up all over the field. He's second on the uh, team in tackles. And that's just a five-yard game. Well, He Chole is going to be seeing Trevelyan in his is nightmares tonight I think that's the one guy that's been able to shut him down and consistently file over file over the place to make tackles uh, if it wasn't for him I think uh, he told probably could have had about you know, three or four 50 yard runs second and five at the 42 St. Clair is changing the play so he does know what an audible is 4-3 set up front handoff he Chole got a lead blocker he Chole picks up a block oh spot away but a nice job there by ambush and Oakenshield to uh, come up and make the stop. Averaging 8.2 yards per carry now, and it's another third down for New York, and we still haven't seen our first pass of the third quarter. What a great name for a guy to stop that play, Ambush. Third and two. <laughs> he came in and ambushed that run. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they, know how to, they know how to find some headliners out there in D.C. Two in the backfield, and they're going to try to get it on three straight runs, and they will not be able to do it. They be in the Knights. Uh, tackle made at the or uh, 46, one yard shy of the first down, and uh, boy, the I I can't believe this is what this game has turned into after that wild first quarter. Well, you jinxed them by talking about. It I know game. that broadcasters jinx, man. They're going for it though. They are going for it. Fourth down and one, or at least they have the offense on the field. Fourth and one, two in the backfield for the Knights. Down to 13 on the play clock. DC has jumped offside earlier tonight, and they're not going to get him to jump again. They didn't even hard count him all the way down to the end of the play clock. St. Clair just said, I'm tired of being on the field, and with eight seconds of the play clock, burns a timeout, and New York will likely punt here. But it's going to be interesting to see if that comes back to bite them. Um, you, know, you don't really want to burn a timeout that early in the first half, or in the second half, You know, especially as close as this game is within seven. Um, that could... That, Timeout could come out to bite them, but um, it is what it is, and they're going to come out and punt now. It's one of those things where it's almost like it's just high risk, high reward. If you get that first down, you could propel yourself to some a lot of momentum because right now I would say, I think it's fair to say that neither team really has a lot of momentum right now. If you don't get it, though, you end up flipping momentum in the other way. Um, and giving the Dragons on uh, the ball on their own side of the field. Tough call. Well, I would have liked to see him go for it. If they're going to go in that situation, just go for it, give the ball to Parky Choll and see if he can come up with it, break a play. But, I mean, coming out there, it's such a low percentage play trying to get them to jump off sides anyway. And if they don't, you burn a timeout, and that could be huge at the end of a close game. I just didn't really like that play call overall, but you know, we'll have to see how it winds up turning out as the game progresses. 21 carries so far for Richard Snowden because the Dragons have possessed the football for a long time here in this half. I would, I would expect to see a little bit more Zuli coming up 
Marcus Snowden's going to get worn down here. He picks up a couple. Second and eight, Jesus Salvador on the tackle. Well, they started that even before the interception. They started to, it started to become the Snowden show, and they weren't being quite as diverse as they were in that first quarter. And it looks like they're coming out doing the same thing here in the third. And like you said, Snowden's going to get worn down. And they were doing that even before the, the interception. So we'll have to see what they do as the game progresses. Second and eight at the 20. Out of the eye with three receivers. And the handoff goes to Snow. Oh, Richard Snowden plowed at the 17. That was nasty, third and long. It's a big hit there. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things about running up the middle is you got a lot of guys in there, and you got some big linebackers in there. And Snowden runs into one right there. Brings up a big third and 10. Third down and long here at the 17. Snowden's out of the gun. Greg Corky has gone silent in this one as Zuli will pump fake and he got whacked at the 11-yard line. What a hit! And uh, DC is going to end up punting out of their own end zone. Doug Garner with his second sack. And uh, New York could really turn the tide there. Brutal. Well, we talked about that in the second quarter where, you know, the longer you make the third down, the longer it takes for the routes that you have to convert to develop and it gives the defensive line more time to try to get in there. And Zuli's also not shown that he's been real effective on those long third downs. So New York doing a good job of forcing him into those situations, you know, at the end of the second quarter and now here in the third. Uh, so definitely putting the, the pressure on him and trying to shift the time in the game. So from their own end zone, the Dragons kick it away from the 46-yard line. Oh, he fumbled it! And it's recovered by D.C. at the 48! A huge turnover. New York's first of the game, and the Dragons have great starting field position. Well, right as I say that New York kind of shifted the momentum by having that great stand on defense, the punt returner coughs up the ball, and D.C. is able to jump on it, get the ball right back, and now let's see if they can diversify a little bit. Move the ball around. Go to Corky, like you said, and try to do something to get the ball moving. First and 10 of the 48. Zuli still has to shake off the smack he took on third down and long but uh, the first turnover of the game for the Knights a costly one New York was going to have the ball in great in a great position to potentially tie and Zuli's got all day to throw and that pass is knocked away and incomplete and Broderick had to play a little defense there at the end of that play on Salvador yeah I think over the middle is not the place that Zuli needs to be throwing he's definitely shown his inexperience here he's you know, and three three big passes over the middle. He's got one that was wide overthrown, one that was intercepted, and the th second one that was almost intercepted. Um, but yet, the one pass that he threw deep down the left sideline, he had great Corky wide open. I think we'd like to see that a little bit more. Um, right now, I think we just put those over the middle passes in the, in the back of the play sheet and don't call them too much anymore. Second and 10 from the 48. Trips right, and off Snowden around the right side. Wow, Richard Snowden. I mean, this guy in the first quarter had a couple of touchdowns. He was dominating. Maku on that tackle, he has been silenced. Well, he's been silenced, but the, the line's also not block, blocking really well. And the defense is playing really well, and they're flowing to the ball. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is the plan for New York uh, coming into the game, but they've definitely made a lot of adjustments. And I think they've got the momentum. Even with the game, uh, and Zuli gets hit as he threw, and, and as you mentioned, it's, it's the offensive line that's really letting D.C. down here in the quarter uh, because Zuli just has no time to do anything. Well, you know, all those runs and, you know, not getting yards, I mean, that takes a toll, not just on the running back. It takes a toll on the line. You know, they get frustrated. They start getting beat. Their confidence get affected by it. Right now, D.C. is going to have to do something on offense to get a spark. Run. Maybe their defense can spark, and maybe their defense can come a big play. But they already got the turnover, and it really didn't help. So um, D.C. is really in trouble now. Uh, we'll see what their defense can do to keep them in it, but that offense is struggling, and it's going to be tough for them to hold on to this lead if they can't move the ball. Yeah, the Dragons, uh, three plays, no yards after the fumble, and, and you got to figure, I mean, if, you're, if your money is on Richard Snowden or Parkey Choll, to just eventually blow the game open. It's got to be on park, right? Well, yeah. If you're going to bet on one of them for a, a big play to turn the tide in the game, for sure, you got to go with both each other. 6 8 to go in the third quarter. D.C. 14, New York 7. The same score we had at the end of the first. Hand off to Hee Chol, and he breaks out of one. Still on his feet. Parky Chol still on his feet. I couldn't see him. He's five foot eight there in the pile. Uh, and he, but he picks up four, and it's second down. Well, while we're making comparisons, who does Parky Joel remind you of? 
Oh, uh, that midget I saw on the street in Vegas. No? I was thinking Barry Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> you went in a completely different direction. If, if we're being honest here, I, I, you know. Second and six, handoff to the midget from Vegas, and he takes the carry around the left side for three yards, third down. Well, you know, this is the staple of the New York offense. They're going to keep pounding it to the shoal. They're going to occasionally mix up some passes, kind of keep you off balance, but he's their bell cow, like we mentioned earlier. They're going to keep pounding it to him, and they're going to live or die by him. If they can get pick up the third down here, they got an opportunity to put something on the board, but it can also come to the Third and three at 26, handoff each shoal. He didn't get it. Lost a yard, and if I'm West St. Clair and and Zach Zuli, I'm saying, hey, come on, coaches. You know, I mean, obviously the coaches don't trust him enough, but I mean, both had flashes of brilliance in the first quarter, and it's 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 pretty surprising. It's almost like neither team wants to make the big mistake through the air. Well, and and if it was just one team playing like that, I'd say they were the team they're going to lose. Because, at least in my perspective, you don't want to be the team that plays not to lose. You want to always play to win. And like you said, I, I think both teams are kind of playing not to lose right now. They're, they're taking it, you know, they're taking the easy stuff of being conservative. And you know, we saw DC be aggressive early on with the touchdown to Corky. Um, we saw Snowden kind of take over the game for short periods. But now they've got two re re relying on. On him, and they're not looking to Corky. They're not putting the ball in Zuli's hands. So if they can change that up, they've got an opportunity to take that momentum back and put some distance here. But I'm not sure that they're going to they're do it. And, you know, so it's going to be whoever probably makes the fewest mistakes going down, there, down the stretch. Zuli flips it out. Well, that doesn't help when your tight end can't catch a pass. Pauly Dixon dropped it, <laughs> and it's second and ten. So Zuli finally gets to throw a pass. And then they're not ready for well, it. Well, it doesn't help with confidence, does it? No, no, <laughs> it does not. If you're with confidence, you, you don't want to yeah, – a guy dropping passes isn't helping you out. And Zuli's rating is down to a 69 for the game. Yeah, that's way below his average. Shout out to everyone out there in the chat tonight. Servo 222, AJ Caswell, Big Rich and, uh, Big Rich and Boy, Darth Destro MD, Danzo 007, DR Sim 80, D SK 1317, Flava 2K, Ghost of Crux, Landry Hat, Mr. Ball Boy 21, and Y Kia 31, and Y Knights True Shot Collar 1, and Yui Bird out there with us tonight. So we appreciate your support, at least in the chat, that is. Third down and three. And uh, that was Snowden, wasn't it? On a seven yard keeper? I was looking at the chat while you were. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Probably should do a better job of multitasking. Snowden didn't get the first down again. Third down and three, and he's wrapped up in the backfield. A one-yard loss, and uh, if anything, these look like uh, two championship defenses out there right now. Fourth down. Well, I don't know if it's more of the two championship defenses or two offenses that are just really struggling to find something that works. Here in the third quarter, I think it's more bad offense. I think in the second quarter, we saw a bit – better defense you know it, it, as, a, as opposed to just bad offense but but yeah it's like uh, as the game has gone along the offenses have you know they just fallen off a cliff I think I'm on TV all the time and I'm making, you know, <laughs> he's making hand gestures for those of you that can't see you this. do it too Mike well I don't talk about it <laughs> <laughs> well I just I feel like you know I get self kind I feel like you're staring at me and I feel like I should say something about it Maybe you should stop staring at me, Mike. I, I think that's the real problem here. Well, you're in the way of <laughs> And off to he totally picks up a yard. 155 yards in the game, down to 6.7 yards he had per carry. 140 in the first quarter. And so it was really close. Yeah, so that means he had what five yards in the last couple of quarters. Well, he, I mean, probably less than 20, 25 in the last quarter and a half for sure. The D.C. offense has definitely adjusted a lot in shutting him down. Second and nine at the 22, just waiting for some fireworks here. And he has got some space right side. And Park he Chol got away from one. A nice tackle, though, made. Porter was the one that missed the tackle. We're going to be third and four. Double spin move. Did you notice that? I did notice that. <laughs> he was he was so far ahead of what was trying to happen as he did the double spin move, anticipating the guy being there. He tried to do double spin move. Parky Choll's got that on a shirt somewhere. <laughs> the double spin move. Yeah. 
third and four at the 26. And they're going to try Parky Chill again here on third down. And Parky Chill got it this time up to the 34. Just because you get it one time doesn't mean that it's always the thing that you should be doing. But the Knights move the change to the uh, 34. Well, there you see those big legs keep pushing. You know, he gets all the notoriety for his his speed and his acceleration. But we see that a lot as him shaking off that first tackle, whether it's spin moves, breaking tackles, uh, just juking guys or whatever. Um, that's one of the things that makes him really dangerous is it's not just his speed. He's, a, he's able to break tackles and create extra space for himself um, all by himself. Any wonder as to why these teams have gone ultra conservative here recently that pass is caught however that's a first down and more a 13 yard gain to the 47 for chris taylor that's his first catch of the day shuts me up real quick <laughs> um well i don't know that dc i i, I you have to suspect it's zuli and they're scared to put the ball in his hands and, and as, have him make a mistake. As a young guy on the road. Right. Right. Um, New York, I think, is just doing what New York does. You know, they put the ball in parking trolls, and they're going to live and die by it. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but he's always got that ability to break off a 70-yard run and change the complexion. St. Clair going to throw it out again. That pass is caught. Turning the corner is Legacy, and he's got a first down to the D.C. 41. That's a gain of 12. And... New York's back. <laughs> as they often do in the SFL. As soon as we say something, yeah. they quickly make us look like idiots. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're being too conservative? Oh, let's throw two times in a row for the to two different receivers for the first time in the game. Alongside Mike Peters, I'm your play-by-play -play commentator, Cameron Irvine. This is the Sim Football Network on Twitch, and this is the second wild card game of the SFL playoffs. If you missed it, as that pass is nearly taken away, nice defense there by Porter. If you missed it Saturday, the... Tallahassee Pride had a 31-0 lead on Baltimore at the half. Nearly blew it. Uh, Baltimore cut the deficit to 10 uh, before Tallahassee woke, woke back up. But still, uh, Baltimore made a run at it. 44-34 the final. And uh, Tallahassee will take on Santa Fe in the first semifinal game, a rematch uh, next week as St. Clair hands it off to Parky Chol. Around the right side, he picks up four. The winner of this game will take on the number one seed, the Louisville Wolfpack at Blue Sun Stadium in Kentucky. And uh, neither team or both teams went there this year and uh, it did not go well. Third down for New York. Three receivers, ball at the 38, right hash. And St. Clair will drop the throw on third down. And St. Clair will fire it left. And that pass is dropped and picked. And it's being returned the other way. 45-50. Got a block inside the 40 down to the 37-yard line. DJ Greenwood, the only veteran on the Dragon team, has a first down and two turnovers in the third quarter for the Knights. Well, you wanted to know why the teams are playing conservative? This is why. <laughs> you can't have this happen if you're running the ball. Now, they could obviously fumble, but I think they're more – confident their running backs not fumbling than they are their quarterbacks or their receivers dropping passes and knocking it into the hands of the defenders. Um, I was actually going to say that before you were going into the update is there was another pass that was almost um, intercepted out in the flat and I, I think that's what both of these offenses are doing. They're scared of that exact situation. DC happened to benefit from it. Now can they not be paralyzed by that fear do something in offense? And off to Richard Snowden and so far not so as uh uh, New York wraps up another uh, tackle for loss, and the defensive line for the Knights uh, is going to have a lot on the box score in that category. End of the third quarter, we're still Dragons 14, Knights 7. Both defenses playing like there's no tomorrow, because for one of these teams, there isn't. We'll be back to Metro Stadium after this. for 25 years have failed to bring you a total game day experience. The SFL believes it's been too long a wait. In 2016. A total game day experience arrives. If you love sim football, 
You'll never want to miss another SFL night again. Multiple games at the same time. More games per season. No more bye weeks. In-game highlights from around the league will keep you engaged. Our league-produced halftime show will catch you up on what you've missed. Customization of your complete roster gives each team a unique brand. An extra star or two won't hurt either. A new league website brings fans the incredible detail of the SFL to the forefront. Play-by-play -play three nights a week in primetime, you got it. SFL is partnering with PX1 Sports, bringing Irvine to epic Madden matchups starting in September. Mark your calendars. Sunday, September 27th, 5 p.m. Eastern. The SFL Championship will feature a four-man commentating crew. It's time to hype next level sim. Our doors are now open. Be the player. Be the coach. Be the owner. Be the league. Be the drama. Grab a seat. Back here at Metro Stadium in Buffalo, New York. Beautiful night for football. About 68 degrees. Fair skies. No clouds. No wind. And uh, so far, over the last two quarters, it's been pretty fair offensively. And <laughs> as we head down to or back uh, into Metro Stadium, 14-7. Dragons still on top with a second and 11 at the night, 38. They come out with two in the backfield, and Zuli's going to drop the throw, and Corky's got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and that pass is caught. Perfect throw to Corky as Patrick Daniel was coming up to take it away. Uh, that was just, that was precision, and it's first down. Well, we were talking in the break. Uh, I wasn't sure they were going to do anything. They've looked so flat early on, and these over-the-middle passes have been really high risk for Zuli, but he's able to complete that one. He finds Corky. It's a little bit shorter route, which I think it plays in the hands of Zuli a little bit more. They get the first down, and now they're at least in field goal range and can get something out of the tournament. 4-3 look for the defense. And Zuli drops to throw, and Zuli will fire incomplete, and he put a little bit too much air under that. I thought Corky had Silva beat. Silva closed the gap. I think that was really good coverage. He was, re he was right on the inside. On ACF that whole time was able to reach in and bat that away. I didn't like that throw. I was really scared. I thought Silva was gonna Silva was gonna grab it and pick it off, but he just went for the safe play and and knocked it down and forced the second down. Marco Silva, fifth in the league this year with five interceptions, went to BYU, and also had five interceptions his senior season of college. Second and ten of the 25. Now a five-season veteran of the SFL. And Zuli will hand it off to Snowden, and Snowden continues his struggles over the past couple of quarters. It's third down and nine, and Silva on the tackle. Credit uh, credit the night defense. They they really did make uh, some good adjustments against Snowden on the ground. Well, yeah, they have. They've, they've completely shut down um, the D.C. running game from about the middle of the second quarter on. And now D.C.'s really struggling to figure out how to move the ball. Back to pass, Zuli on third down and long. Zuli's under pressure and he's sacked. How many times have we seen that on third and long? The youngster doesn't get rid of the football, uh, but they they should be in range for a field goal here, which would make it a two-score game. Well, I think that puts them back to close to yeah, a 50 yarder. That's this true. going to be a very long field goal. Um, and we talked about it. They got themselves in, in position to add they try to go up by two scores, and they kind of shut themselves in the foot, and make it very, very tough here for the lefty kicker. This is going to be officially, I believe, from 46 yards. Makeable kick, but it's not easy. From the left hash, the left-footed kicker to put the Dragons up by 10 on the road. 
That kick is good. Oh, he drilled that one. A beautiful kick, and finally the 14-7 gridlock from the first quarter is broken. And that hit the back of the net. Could have been good from about 49, 50 yards away. And it's 17-7, to 7, D.C. You never really know what to expect with kickers in this league. They're not nearly as refined as the ones that you would find in the NFL. But um, they're he, great snap, good hold, and just drills it. And had a couple extra yards on it. And now a 10-point lead with the way these defenses are playing and the way the offense is kind of struggling. This could be enough uh, to put the game away. How long can the D.C. Dragons keep Parkey Chol contained? That is really the big question. Well, the thing that the field goal does is even if he does break one out, they're still, you know, he breaks off a six or seven, they still have the lead. Right. Now, the way their offense is playing, they're, it's going to be hard for them to, to move the ball, but they, they put them, they, that field goal is huge, and then it makes a two-score um, you know, they need two drives to try to tie it up or, or take the lead, and New York hasn't shown to be able to do that so far. Empty backfield, check down, it's knocked in the air, and I cannot believe DJ Greenwood did not have a second interception. Looked like a pretty good play, almost like a little wide receiver screen to the outside, but uh, Greenwood blew it up. Well, Greenwood was there, and I think he just lost the ball. Looked <laughs> like it bounced off his helmet, rolled down his back, and he couldn't figure out where the ball was, and it wound up hitting the ground. <laughs> Um, almost had an opportunity for a second interception, but they live in at second and ten. Second and ten. Bronx Studwell quiet tonight for the Knights. Not a single catch at the tight end spot. He's mostly a blocker, but still good for two or three a game at least. Uh, he Chol's going to take it on a swing, and Parky Chol broke away from one and got the first down of the 41, stretching the football out to the orange sticks to move the chains. I think Parky Chol heard you talking about it. Kind of guy, he was more of a you know flash or, or bust kind of guy, and he's done a, pretty much ever since I made that comment. He's done a pretty good job. He's been picking up you know four or five yards here and there. Here, he pretty much, I mean, it's a bad throw, kind of led led him a little bit too far towards the sideline, but he's able to fight and pick up the first down and keep the drive alive. Same schedule format as this week, folks. The comp, the uh, semifinals, and at least this year, the way the bracket turned out, the conference uh, finals. Uh, will take place Saturday at noon, Monday at 5.15. Swing out by St. Clair. That pass is caught on the side on an AC-41. Nice job by Jake Legacy. Get those toes in into the Dragon territory. There's great awareness on the sideline over Legacy to keep his feet in and make the catch. And this is what New York needs to do a little bit more. Now, uh, Washington's going to challenge it now. They're throwing the flag. Initially, it looked like a catch to me. The what did Dragon. it look like to you at first glance? I thought it was a what catch at first glance. But now I'm pushing him like He needs a foot. Take a look. Press coverage initially. Legacy. I think he caught that I ball. I think he got that too. The only thing I you could say is if he didn't have control of the ball by the time the second foot came down. Out True. Of bounds. After review, the play stands. The pass nope. was complete. It's going to stand. So Sam Williams burns a timeout. So DC the is down to one timeout uh, here in the in the fourth down. quarter and. In a close game, th that could end up uh, that could end up being problematic as well for the Dragons. It could. It, you know. Check that. New York took that timeout, so they both have right, two. Right. My apologies. I thought, that, I thought that was right. But, I, well, at least they, they even it up. I'd rather wor waste the timeout being up by 10 than, than down by 10. Or 7 at the time, which New York did. Three receivers for New York. St. Clair out of the shotgun. Rare time we've seen St. Clair out of the gun tonight. And he flings it down the field. And the pass is intercepted. One-handed. DJ Greenwood is playing the game of his life. And the Dragons have a first down of the 26. His second interception of the game. He had won all of the regular season. <laughs> I'm kind of speechless. He goes up. He's fully extended. And gets this reaches out one hand. And drags it, and the receiver had him toasted. And he reaches up one hand, snatches that ball out of the air, second interception of the game. And if it wasn't for this Washington defense, like they would really be in trouble the way this is, but way the offense is struggling right now. But the defense is keeping them, uh, keeping them in front and giving them a chance to add on more uh, to this 10-point lead right now. 
the Odell Beckham, that one. I was trying not to make another NFL run because I do quite a bit. That's okay, as uh, Richard Snowden takes it around the side for a six-yard game. Wait until you get into our league and you see all the Odell Beckham catches <laughs> this yeah. year. Well, that's true. <laughs> hey, I, hey. You know, I'm built for Odell Beckham catches. Well, I, <laughs> Lots I think, of excitement this year uh, on PX1 Sports with Cam calling the game. I think we'll be all right. Second and four at the 33. DC up by 10 with the ball. Clock is starting to become an issue for the Knights, who in the first quarter looked pretty good. They had just fallen flat. Three turnovers in the second half are falling apart right now as Richard Snowden once again is shut down, and that has also, in a way, been the saving grace uh, for as Daniel makes the tackle for uh, for New York is is their job on Snowden. He's down to just four yards a carry. You know, I. It's hard being in a playoff game, and you know, if you lose that the game's over, you've got a rookie quarterback. But I'd like to see him take be a little bit more aggressive with their play calling on these short yard situations and try to do something to extend the lead. Hand off to Snowden again on third down. Didn't get it. And a three and out off of the D.J. Greenwood interception. D.J. McCoo with another tackle, and it's fourth down. I think D.C. just really has to be confident in their defense right now. They've got a couple of turnovers. The special teams has created a turnover. I think they're they're rolling. I think their game plan right now is they're going to roll the dice. They're going to say we're going to put our hands in our defense versus our rookie quarterback come, who buddy. might blow it for us. And so far, it's working out for them. Um, but you know. If, if, New York's able to get one score. Marky Joel breaks something off. Maybe they go to Legacy. It's a drastic return of the game. It's not going to 7.49 left. Still plenty of time for the Knights. Heck, the Crabs down 31 nothing at the half. Greg and I were falling asleep. We thought the ball game was over, and then DR Sim happened. Obviously, there's no DR Sim on the field tonight for New York. Uh, but well, if there is one, he's playing for DC. Yeah, it, well, exactly. Uh, and I don't think that you can execute a trade uh, in the middle of the game. First and 10 of the 35, St. Clair's going to throw it. St. Clair's going to go deep. That pass is caught by Legacy down to the D.C. 40-yard line. And uh, he raises his hand and says, present. <laughs> well, we just talked about Legacy, and there he comes up with a big big catch there along the sideline. Um, he actually, good extension. Gets both hands on the ball, able to secure it, and uh, get his feet down before he's knocked out of bounds there. But... You know, we were talking about things we can do to spice up the league and things to change, but what about trading guys mid-game? Mid <laughs> <laughs> no, Will that bring in some viewers? <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think that's in the cards, but a nice uh, veteran poise there, too, in the pocket. Under pressure, nice throw there by St. Clair. First and 10 of the 40. They're going to hand it off to Heechol, and Heechol's going to break off a tackle. Heechol past the 30. Heechol being uh, chased from behind, got 14 yards. Greenwood on the tackle, first and 10 at the 26 now, 181 for Park. Has there ever been an athlete like Park Pichol in the SFL? No, I mean, I mean, or we talked. Or the WAFL? We talked about it, um, you know, earlier, the fact that he broke the rushing record by, by 500 yards uh, that, that has stood for, you know, over the first four seasons of the league. No. I mean, he he has been outstanding all season long. He's like long. the Babe Ruth of SFL. Yeah, and and it's just and it's just really been this season as as Heechol loses two yards. He was he was above average last year. He was and they and they relied on him a lot, but obviously wasn't even wasn't good enough to get New York into the playoffs. Um, and and New York really struggled to to win games in this system last year. But the emergence of Park Heechol is just changed the game and you saw it around the league other teams just trying to keep up um you know on the, on the ground game against uh against the Knights second and 12 after the two-yard loss St. Clair back to pass St. Clair gonna flip it out right side that pass is incomplete Jake Legacy's got to know where the sideline is third and 12. Well, I think that was just a bad pass by St. Clair and the funny thing is as he was dropping back I was thinking that St. Clair is showing the difference in the experience between him and Zuli right now but then he throws one he leads Legacy too far out of bounds he's not able to get his feet in and brings up a, lar a long third and 12 which you've seen neither one of these quarterbacks have really been able to be real effective on so far in this game. Now the good thing for New York is is they are in field goal range they could cut it back down to a seven-point game, but uh, if they take a sack here, that could change. West St. Clair back to pass against a four-man rush. He has to step on the pocket. Is he throw? That pass is incomplete. Just out of the reach of Jake Legacy as the hit affected the pass. Fourth down. That was really scary there for the Dragons. Well, it was, but I think that's, again, that's what you see the 
um, the experience level. St. Clair, he's got a he's got a guy who's got his hand on him. He's trying to drag him down. He still takes a step up and he throws the ball down the field. He's able to avoid the sack and put him in a position to where they can kick a field and go and get it back down to seven, which allows Parky Chol to be a difference maker in the game. Again. And we and we've seen Zach Zuli hold on to the ball and take sacks over and, and over again. And that's been a difference. New York has struggled kicking the football this year. 44-yard field goal from the right hash. Knights to try to cut it back to a one-score game, and that kick is missed to the right. No good. And the Knights miss on an opportunity again. How many kickers have they had this year? Eight. No, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like they've had a lot, and none of them can figure out how to find the uprights. The one game we were talking about also in the break, um, where New York, well, and maybe it wasn't the same game, but New York missed three field goals in the fourth quarter they could have put the game away and they continue to struggle you know they get an opportunity here to get within seven and let their biggest their playmaker be able to change the game and they can't convert the field goal and they're still down by 10 and another drawn penalty and kind of falling apart if you were an owner in the sfl as new york jumped off sides so now it's going to be forced in first and five if you were an owner in this league would you uh would you show out some some money for maybe a better kicker it's tough. Tough call. I don't think you can with the way that the rosters are structured. And How about with a few more stars on each side of the if field? If you could have more stars, then I think that it's, it's worth consideration, especially which, I mean, if you're New York, you have to consider it because it's been detrimental to you. It's, um, one of the, it's one of those things like until you get burned by it, you don't really even exactly. consider it. Well, it's just kind of, you know, story of life. You know, you don't see stop signs in three corners until somebody gets in an accident. So it's kind of the way, you know, we're kind of a read and react type of society. Uh, but, I mean, if you're New York, I think you would you'd definitely consider it if you have some extra roster spots. But I don't know. That's I, I think ideally what you want to do in this league right now is try to build an offense and a defense in which that gives you a bigger lead that kickers don't have to be a part of it. DC still has to move the ball. Only a one yard gain. Zuli back to pass. Zuli steps up the pocket, fires right side. That pass caught wide open, and, and you and I could see it uh, from the beginning of that route, Mike. Uh, nobody on Artorius Revan. Well, it, it doesn't matter who's playing quarterback. If you give them that much time, they're going to be able to find a receiver, unless it's just an awful throw. He actually kind of stumbled a little bit coming out of his break, but uh, got to give credit to Zuli there. This is the first pass. Um, outside of a little post route to Corky on the last drive, this is the first pass we've really seen him have some poise and, and make a good completion there. Can he keep it up? Can he keep moving the ball here? Are they going to stall it again? That's still yet to be seen. It, this, is, this is really crazy as we start to get to the end of this game and D.C. moves the change yet again. If D.C. wins tonight, as Snowden is going to lose a yard, if D.C. wins, all four expansion teams will be the final four. Louisville, Santa Fe, Tallahassee, and D.C. How about that? Welcome to the SFL. Welcome to Conspiracy Theories. <laughs> you can be a playoff team if you get in. <laughs> that's just that's part of that marketing department that needs a needs a raise. <laughs> don't put that target on my back, Mike. I don't I don't need any of that. Hand off to Snowden on second down 11. They still have to take care of it. Only a one-yard gain. It's going to be third and 10. Snowden just 124 yards tonight. Bobby Law on another tackle. Can Zach Zuli do it again here for D.C.? Well, we've talked about this before, and we've seen this all night. He's Anything more than about third and five, he's struggled um, terribly. Uh, he's taken several sacks in these situations, so um, the odds of him converting here aren't very high, but we'll, we'll see if he's kind of rebounded and going to show some points here in the fourth quarter. Good point. Can he step up from his rookie status here on the road and get his first playoff victory? And they're not even going to try it. They'll hand it off to Snowden. They'll lose two yards. And you can't fault D.C. for doing that when your defense is playing as good as they well, are. Well, you know, when I first saw the play, I was like, man, really? They're not even going to give it in their hands. But I'm like, okay, well, they're up by 10. You know, we're under four minutes to go. Why take the chance that he throw, throws an interception? Now, granted, you know, you throw the ball deep, you throw a 40-yard pass, and it gets intercepted. It's the same thing as a punt. You know, that wouldn't have been a horrible idea. Um, I probably would have rather have seen that. But, you know, you're up by 10 with under three and a half minutes. Your defense is playing great in their offense. Hasn't shown a whole lot outside of one big run by Parky Joel. You know, it's, it's, it is hard to fault their, their play call. So the Dragons punt it away. They will get it to the 12. 
New York on the return, not much there to the 13. So New York a long way to go here. But again, just a two score game and we've seen crazier things happen. Like the Cowboys last night, that was unbelievable. True or false, Tony Romo is a Hall of Famer. And I'm not a Cowboy guy. Well, that's why I'm asking. If he's, I think he's got to win a Super Bowl. Dan Marino never won a Super Bowl. Yeah, but da I thought I think Dan Marino was better than Romo. Oh, for sure. For sure. You know, and, and, that's and, not a question. And because Romo's not as good, I think he needs a bowl under his belt. Uh, three minutes to go, second and 12. Uh, that swing pass to Heath Schull does not work out. And St. Clair takes three steps back, fires down the field right into pressure. And now it's third and 12, just like that. And this is just D.C. has had the Knights number over the last two games in this season. They, they held them to 13 points in D.C. They've held them to seven today. And I think the light is going out on the Knights. Well, I think we, we mentioned this earlier in the season that D.C. was the one team that was able to come up and stop Parky Joel. Held him to 121 yards. It was early on in the first quarter. We thought that was completely going to change. He broke off the big run. He had 140 yards. But he's really done nothing since then. And, you know, if, if teams want to figure out how to stop Parky Joel, just follow D.C.'s defense. It's a late flag. They were trying to set up a screen to Heath Joel. It was blown up. St. Clair threw it anyway to avoid a sack. And I'm wondering what this flag is. Ineligible receiver. Oh, my field. goodness. Ineligible receiver. They'll decline the penalty. It's now fourth and 16. You can't go for it. But you kind of have to. You, yeah. I mean, with 2.48 to go, I, I don't think that I don't think you have a choice. I, I think. I don't think you ever. I mean, uh, they're going yeah. to. But fourth and 16 from inside your own 10. Yeah, two time out of the crowd, a little unsure about it too, although they've been a little unsure about this performance all night long. Three receivers, two to the right for New York, and it's a Hail Mary time for St. Clair. The pass is caught for a first down to the 28 and 21 yard pickup for Taylor, and here come the Knights. Oh my goodness. <laughs> As I was dropping back, the thing that popped in my head was Green Bay in that fourth and 28 or whatever it was a couple years ago, and. I'll, Saint, be, I'll be danged. St. Clair through oh. a pick on the next play. Trevelyan picks it off. And that may be the ball game, although there's still two and a half to go. And how about the response from Trevelyan, who made so many big first-half tackles? What, is they, what are they feeding this New York defense? This D.C. I mean, defense? DC's defense. What are they feeding the New York offense? Well, <laughs> doo-doo, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but back to your point, yeah, the, the Dragons, if if anyone's going to go in to Louisville, obviously one of the things is Snowden only picks up two more yards. One of the things that you got to do when you play Louisville, obviously, you know, we've seen it time and time again this season in their first season in the league. They're explosive and they're balanced. They can run, they can throw. If D.C.'s defense plays like they are playing today, that's – that's the way they're going to pull that upset against Louisville next week. Yeah, but, D but Louisville's way more diverse than New York is. D.C. football, much like, you know, a lot of sports, is a game of matchups. And I think D.C. just – they're a tough matchup for, for for New York. They they know how to get their guys in position versus what New York does. Now, a team like Louisville, who's way more diverse and unpredictable, that's going to be a completely different game, and especially if – the Washington the DC offense plays like they are now, that's going to be really tough against that Louisville defense, which is pretty strong in and of itself. So they're going to throw on second and eight. He's sacked. That's a seven yard loss, and the Knights will burn a timeout. They're down to one, so they could potentially get the ball back. No timeouts, minute 50 or so on the clock if they play their cards right. Yeah, NY Kia, uh, defensive coordinator for DC, he's going to have his hands full game planning for the Wolfpack next week. That'll either be Saturday, 1 Eastern, or Monday, 6.15 p.m. Eastern here on the Sim Football Network. We'll have that schedule ready later tonight. That is an overthrown ball, and that saves the Knights a timeout. It's like Eli Manning all over again. <laughs> well, the difference is, is that was just a seven-point game last yeah. night. Six-point um, game. So, well, six. They only needed seven. This one's a ten-point game. I, I, 
But a minute 53, if it was one score, I'd say that New York has their in position that they want to be in. But being down 10 with less than two minutes to go, it's still possible. But I don't know. The way D that I don't know if the DC defense is capable of getting two scores. Of and New York has and New York has not proven that they can go out and they can get a score. I mean. It's a, it's a it's a moot point until the Knights say, okay, we're going to put some points up on the board for the first time in two hours. Well, we talked about Chris Taylor earlier. He has been kind of um, kind of non-existent so far. Legacy is the one guy that the focus is on. I think now you try to take – I mean, the focus is on Legacy, obviously. Now you take a chance with Taylor on the opposite side and see if you can get him up. Three receivers. Taylor's to the bottom of the screen. St. Clair changing up the play. He's got to hurry. Just one timeout and 87 yards to go. St. Clair going to flip it outside. Pass caught. Did he get in the bounds? Yes, he did. Five-yard gain to Legacy. Not horrible because it stops the clock. Second down. It's not horrible. I mean, it's not taking a whole lot of time off the clock. And maybe they're just trying to get St. Clair's confidence back after the turnover and kind of get him started on a positive footing. But you don't have a whole lot of time left. And you got to get you got to pick up bigger chunks of yardage than that. Um, but it's still, I mean, they still have a little bit of time, but they're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive if they want to come back here. Can you believe that this game is 3 nothing since the first quarter? No. I Not mean, the way it started. No. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Empty backfield. Back to pass St. Clair. Going to swing it outside. That's only a two-yard gain, and that's not a good play. No, they're playing like they're down one score. You know, there's – okay, all we got to do – I mean, really, they're playing like they're down a field goal. Not maybe, a field goal they, a maybe they thought the kicker made it, and they just – Forgot to look at the scoreboard. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, the, the play calling is kind of puzzling here early on. And it, well, it's been kind of puzzling for most outside of that first quarter. It's been kind of puzzling. Well, and that's been the Knights' kryptonite this year yeah. is that their their offensive execution has not been up to snuff. And, and that is that has really been problematic for this team as St. Clair swings it outside. Off the hands of the receiver. Dropped. It's fourth down. Now you, you have to go for it again. But... My goodness, these teams are not helping themselves out tonight. No, the, off <laughs> the offenses are, are, are definitely struggling. And going back to your point about we talked about New York going on, and, you know, they found the lightning in the bottle with Parky Chol, and they were going to kind of ride the train. But And we wondered how long it was going to last. And here we got to this situation where it looks like they, they ran up into that team that figured out how to stop them, and they weren't able to make those adjustments in time to be like St. Clair on fourth down, and Kablash picked off Trevelyan again! Trevelyan and Greenwood each have two interceptions. The Knights turn the ball over five times in the second half, and the Dragons are ready for the mighty Wolfpack. <laughs> well, there might be a reason why they keep going to Parky Chol, because and what's so strange about this game is not only was the first quarter so completely different than what we saw in the rest of the game, but then we talked about it earlier, so two of the three quarterbacks that have shown, thrown single dig digits and interceptions are both just terrible in the second half of this game. And it's yeah, I, I, you have to give credit, especially to the D.C. defense and the way they played, and shout out to Mikea for the way he had his guys prepared for this game. I mean, it was an impressive performance, and New York, unfortunately, you know, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board and, and figure out how to diversify their offense a little bit. They want to keep Parky Chol because he's an amazing guy, but they, they have to give him a little bit more to work with so he, do, he doesn't have to do it all. So, and it's very much like the, the Lions back to Barry Sanders. You know, everything was based around him, and, you know, once once it runs out of gas, there's not a whole lot you can do. Again, want to remind everybody that Saturday 1 Eastern, Monday 6.15 Eastern as the clock will wind here for the Dragons. Uh, we will have our semi-final contest before the big championship game Sunday, September 27th, 4 Central, 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you're uh, you're back with us next Monday, I believe, correct? I believe so, yeah. So we'll see what uh, what that game. That Louisville uh, DC game shows up on the schedule. I wouldn't complain about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, Although and both games are going to be good. I, I I say that only because I, I've called both of these guys, and I like the defensive matchups, and I think that could be another defensive slugfest, but I think either way, both teams are going to be great. Yeah, Tallahassee, Santa Fe, they well, D.C. Louisville met only once this year uh, in Louisville, and the Wolfpack won that game. Tallahassee, Santa Fe split the season series. Tallahassee looks looked very impressive. 27-17 over Santa Fe, who was previously 6-1 uh, in the final week of the regular season, and then just jumped out to that crazy lead on Baltimore and really put the Crabs in a hole. So uh, that'll be interesting. You talk about teams 
hot at the right time. I, I feel like right now that, you know, the, the Tallahassee Pride and the D.C. Dragons, the road teams, are, are they're hot right now. They're, they're playing their best football of the season, at, at least – uh, at least on the de defensive side of the ball. Well, well, right. Uh, DC is really going to have to figure out something on offense, though. Because um, Louisville is, I mean, they, they've showed it. They were one of the best teams all year. And if their offense comes out struggling like they have in the last three quarters of this game, they don't have a chance, I don't think, against Louisville. Um, even with their defense playing as great as they are right now. Um, on the flip side, you talked about Tallahassee. They have... They've probably the hottest team in the league. They've made a huge transition since the early part of the season and seem to have really got themselves in a roll and got everybody working in the right direction. Uh, a team that, you know, an expansion team that was kind of in the middle fighting for the playoff spot in the middle of the season. And <laughs> so, final score, 17-7 to as we... Ahead uh, of the post game, 290 yards for D.C., 339 for New York in the loss. And I'm trying to think, didn't D.C. have like 260 at the half? They, they had like 145 through the air and 101 on the that. ground. They were, both, they were over 100 in both. It was probably a 240, 250. Yeah, and they finished with 290, and they actually increased their lead <laughs> in the well, second yeah. half. Their defense, hats off to their defense. Uh, that was, man, there's really not much you can say about that. Five turnovers. Uh, well, they got a special teams. They got four interceptions. That was that was impressive. Yeah, it's not often you see five turnovers wow, as you look at. see Greenwood's interception. Yeah, that was that was a brilliant uh, takeaway from, from Greenwood. And and when you look at the, you know, at the, at the stats, Trevelyan and, and Greenwood combine for two interceptions in eight games and they get four in one half um it was just a perfect storm for the dragons tonight greenwood also had eight tackles that led the team well yeah greenwood green well actually green and trevelyan both they were both phenomenal and you know sometimes stats can be misleading because you can have guys that don't have you know great stats and all of a sudden they break out at the right time but at the same time you know, sometimes players just playing the biggest games, and, and this was all the, the lights were on. You know, the, the all the fans were there, the rowdy crowd on the road, and those two guys took it upon themselves and, and took the game over in the second half and made the plays when it counted. And they are mostly responsible for that win, even though we see Stone come up here. He had two touchdowns in the first quarter, um, but he wasn't able to do a whole lot. This game was really on the on the DC defense. Well, and and in their first meeting or in their second meeting, I should say, the Dragons got out to a 14 nothing advantage and ended up winning that ball game by 11 and they got out to a 14 7 start and they end up winning the ball game by 10 here tonight so first quarter full of offense uh last three quarters full of head scratchers for the new york knights and terrific uh dc dragon defense as all four expansion teams will be in the final four uh, of the sfl playoffs and i don't think anyone would have placed those bets uh, that 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 would be the last four coming into the uh, to the semifinal weekend. Well, if you did, you need to head down to Vegas and put some money <laughs> on some NFL games because <laughs> you're on a roll. Uh, yeah, I don't think anybody could ever expect that. But hats off to those four the four owners of the expansion teams. And you know, I mean, it's an accomplishment to get one expansion team in, but all four of those guys. And also hats off to you know that's the foul for bringing in quality guys that knew what they were doing and able to up the level of competition we say this in our leagues all the time that you're only as good as your weakest team and to bring in teams like that that can up the level of competition and, and you know <clears throat> come in and kind of change the way everybody's playing and, and you know shut out show people how to shut down park control and stuff like that i mean that's that's an impressive accomplishment all around and um i think that's that spells great things in the future for the league overall yeah, and with, with more guys every day uh, applying for teams and, and filling up the slots, uh, we're excited for that. Don't forget, if you want to be a player, a coach, an owner, uh, or a member of the league like Mike Peters, you can head to simulationfl.com and check out uh, or and, uh, and sign up quick and painless. And, um, you know, get, get involved in all the fun coming up in 2016. But we've still got plenty more fun uh, coming up next uh, Saturday and Monday. Well, really... Saturday, golly, it's in five days and Monday uh, as the Dragons will take on Louisville in the 4-1 or in the 5-1 matchup 
uh, and the uh, Santa Fe Gorillas will host the Tallahassee Pride in the 2-3 matchup. The winners will meet in the fifth edition of the SFL Championship game live from Bagnod Memorial Stadium in San Francisco, California. Uh, Sunday, September 27th, 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Sim Football Network on Twitch. And we could not be uh, more excited for whoever ends up uh, ends up getting there. And I would not be surprised if we had an upset or two next week either. Um, Mike Peters, uh, final thoughts tonight as we wrap things up here from uh, Buffalo. Well, uh, first thing I was just just coming ahead when you're talking about it. Super for the championship game, two weeks, four man. Four man production crew. We're gonna have at least three in the booth, maybe a sideline reporter, maybe a halftime guy, kind of figuring out the roles and everything. But that's gonna be exciting. Look, excited to look forward to that. And probably from what I mean, what anybody knows. I mean, the two man crew is probably a first in this kind of genre. A four man crew is gonna be really stepping up the level of production of anything that anybody's seen like this. Um, so that's gonna be fun to be a part of that. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football League. Alongside Mike Peters, I'm your play-by-play -play commentator and SFL Commissioner Cameron Irvine. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football League from everyone on our crew at Metro Stadium in Buffalo, New York. For the first time, the Knights will not win the summer championship game. And we will have a new champion this year as all four expansion teams into the Final Four. This has been the Simulation Football League's Wild Card Weekend. Enjoy Monday Night Football and the rest of your evening. Go Vikings. Good night, everybody.